I'm Kelly Wagner, and this is writing, making writing come alive. And just kind of who I am, um, I teach at Xavier High School in Cedar Rapids, and I teach English as well as journalism. So I teach the newspaper and the yearbook. I'm in charge of both of those. They are classes at our school, not just extracurriculars. And then I teach a reading class. So. Um, a very small group of some of my struggling readers, and we just work with those freshmen and try to get their reading and comprehension levels to increase over over the course of the year. And that's my little six-month-old Elijah. So I thought if a keynote could have a picture of their child on a presentation, it was okay for me too. So I added him this morning. I was like, I can put him on there. So yes, better than looking at me, he's a little cutie. Okay, so in this session, kind of saw this from a little bit of the descriptor, but my hope is just to talk with you, talk to you about bringing writing alive in your classroom and just making it more engaging for students because if we do this the same way we've always done and it's just for the teacher, their motivation is just not as high as it could be, as it should be. So I have a couple of ways for you to Give them ideas, use apps, use technology, and just increase that motivation. Things that I've seen that have students wanting to write more, wanting to produce more, and then wanting to share it with friends, family, other teachers, just what's worked for me in the past. So some of these will be newspaper examples, just because I teach some journalism classes, but you can certainly bring them into your own classes. Um, and you know how I really feel about this is just when the audience is more than just the teacher, the engagement soars. I think when your students can know that it's not just being read for a grade, they're going to try harder. If they know someone else is reading it, they're going to try a little bit harder. And whether that means content, grammar, or mechanics, they just want to do better if someone other than the teacher is going to see this. And sometimes I get, who's going to see this? And then they put a little bit more extra effort into it. So some of the things I'll talk about today Erasma, which is the app I mentioned you could download. Having relationships with your local newspapers has been incredible for uh, my classroom. So I can tell you what we did with that to increase writing motivation. We have an online newspaper. We have a student-led Instagram account. We, ha we use Newzilla, so I threw in a little bit of reading there. So um, I really love Newzilla, and I've been using that. So straying away just for a few minutes from writing and going into the reading. And then we also use student blogs. I happen to use Weebly for my classroom blog. And then Canva just for kind of something fun. So hopefully there's at least one of these that you haven't seen before that I can help you or show you how I use it in my classroom. And you can take that to your students. So Erasma, if you're not familiar with what Erasma is, it is an app that is augmented reality. And I will show you a few examples of that. It makes writing more than just words. So what it does is you maybe take a picture of something, absolutely anything, and then you can add a video overlay to it. So when a student would scan that picture, it would come alive. So I am going to skip this for a second just so I can show you what I mean. If you want to be able to do this, you would just have to follow our account. It is a um, private account, but you anyone can join it and follow it. So we use this for our newspaper. But an example is last year, it was the day that the musical came out. And so we took this picture of the lead for our musical, they did Chicago in the fall, and we added an erasma to it. So I'm gonna show you what that does. So if you have the app, all you, can, all you have to do is just take your smartphone and it's going to pick up my shadow. And now it's the actual musical coming to life because we took video of it. So this is, we went down, we went to the musical practice, we got a short little clip of it, and we added it to something that would otherwise be just a picture of something. I'm going to have a couple more examples of that, or if you want to try this on your own, you're welcome to either take a newspaper or I did make this presentation on the resources page. So if you download it in the future, you can give it a try and take a look at what it looks like. Uh, and another example of that is 
this went into our paper. We were redoing our school library last year, and so we kind of wanted a picture of what it would look like, but we wanted someone to be telling us what it would look like. And so we have the school librarian interviewed. So if the students would come over, that shadow's a little rough, but I don't know if it's gonna pick up my shadow here. So she's just talking about what it's going to look like. You don't have to be right on it, it kind of stays with you. <laughs> So unless you totally move off of it. Um, but that was just kind of a way we used this to make interviews come alive in our newspaper last year. So we had a couple of fun features where there were student pictures and we went in and interviewed them about IBA. And students were down at the basketball court, these senior boys, and they have a basketball and they brag about how awesome they are and then they shoot the ball and all the this. But it was just kind of a fun, get them involved, but my students are still writing content, and then the students think it's so fun because it's coming to life, life right before their eyes. So it's just kind of a neat, um, a neat app that you can use. And again, just anything on the screen, of course, works, but um, if anybody wants to try this, you can certainly take my phone too, but I want to show you how awesome it is because it's just like, exactly what it is in the picture, so kind of a cool thing. So that's one thing you can do with an Erasmus. Um, and again, you can make this private or public, so if you wanted like a classroom account, you could do that. And it is free, just that students have to follow you, kind of like an Instagram thing to be able to see what it is that you've posted. So they would be familiar with that. But then all of our Erasmus come up. So we had a, an art student who we interviewed explaining what her art means. And so more than just writing an article, which we did have in the newspaper, we had her picture, and then we had this little target we could scan, and then it's actually her talking about it. So it just makes each project just a little bit more depth to it, but it also makes students want to read it want to see it, want to take our newspapers when we pass it out, so it just makes a whole other element for them to be able to be engaged with. So when we passed out the newspapers, this particular newspaper, eighth hour that day, you just heard this song everywhere in the, um, which was great, they did a great job, but, um, so that's kind of fun. I do have this link, which I'm gonna skip right now just because of, oh gosh, sorry. We'll see if this comes back just for the sake of time, but if you want to go back to the resource page, this just so shows a couple of ways that other um, schools have used Erasmus. They show a map assignment, so maybe there's a map graph and you can scan it, and it has the student explaining how they did that problem. So it's just a big bulletin board, and they have just a bunch of different things that say, Erasmus, scan me, scan me, and all of them are targets, and then you can make them all come to life. So pretty neat, pretty neat thing to do. And then just some of, my, some of my ideas for this, with including writing, would be book reviews. How cool would it be just to make your, the thing you scan, your target, be the cover of the book? And then what pops up is your student talking about that book. And so that means any person that's following your Erasmus account, or if you made it public, if they scanned that image, they would get that book review, which is pretty neat. Just in entry tickets, exit tickets, vocabulary, having students scan something and then be able to tell what that word is. Lots of how-to videos, uh, tutorials. Students learn best when they're reteaching someone, and so if that's in a video format, this is a great way to do it. Just makes it a little bit more fun. Next thing I want to talk about was just bringing in writers from your local newspaper. If you have 
a local newspaper. We started a relationship with our local newspaper, the Cedar Rapids Gazette, and it has been incredible. Um, J.R. Ogden is a sports editor. He comes in multiple times a year. He talks to my students, and he tells them kind of what it's like to write a real story, um, what his deadlines are, what you can do with a writing degree these days, how newspapers are not dying, they're changing. And so maybe you're not going to get a physical newspaper all the time, but how has that changed his job in writing? And so he comes in, and one of the wonderful things he does with us is he has all of my students write one sports article during the year, and he will put it on the website. And so it's kind of its own little tab, a student journalist, but all of my students to see their byline online, that they can tweet that link out, they get so excited. And so you know that they're just retweeting it and they're sharing it and you can see the stats from that. It's just pretty neat. And then some of the best articles that my students write, he has been gracious enough to put them in the physical paper. He has room for them maybe on a Saturday or Sunday, which is really awesome. So when those bylines show up online or on the paper, that motivation soars. And here's just kind of you know, me um, circling just how awesome it is that he does label them as Xavier students and then what grade they are in. But those are just two examples from, we've been doing this for a couple of years, so I took one from two years ago and one from last year, and we will continue to do that. So he has been a great resource for us. I really encourage you to reach out to someone who is that person for you in the community. He's taught me things about writing and held me accountable to some writing rules, and then I can teach those to my students. So that's been really incredible, too. But again, just that engagement soars when you are not the only person reading it. They are definitely more likely to edit if they know that someone else is going to be reading this. Their parents can read it, their grandparents, their friends, because you're going to be tweeting this link out. So then they're, they're going to make corrections. They're going to make sure that this article is as perfect as possible. So the editing and the revision process, if you guys are in here, you know how important that is with writing, probably. And so um, that makes it pretty easy to sell the writing and the revision process. So this is just another thing we started just recently. My students do have an Instagram account. It's very short little bits of writing, but it is still writing. And students have the password for one week, and then, and I have the password. So one student and I have the password and then I change it. And so each student gets a chance to run it for a week, maybe two weeks, and they post, they introduce themselves. So this is how one of my students chose to introduce herself during the homecoming uh, festivities. And then um, she just took pictures then that week of things that she was doing. I stole this idea from Drake University, actually. I have a, a past student who, told me this is what she was doing in her writing and journalism classes, and I thought, oh, that's a good idea. Let's see if it can work. And so if you don't trust your students enough to say, let's just open this or give this to students completely, it's nice because I have the password and they have the password, so they know they are accountable that week for anything that's posted. And that means pictures, but also, please don't spell things wrong. Please don't put things in there that shouldn't be in there. So digital citizenship, in addition to writing, in addition to, hey, look at me, look what I'm in charge of this, this week. So just some ownership there with their writing, too. We also have a student newspaper. So again, this is just if we're not publishing for this, the Cedar Rapids Gazette, at least we can be putting other students onto this site. And so J.R. Ogden from the Gazette is great about sports articles, but we have a ton of articles. Students want to write a movie review, a book review. Um, they want to go to a restaurant and tell us if we should eat there or not, and rate it out of five stars. They just want to do some fun things too. And so we can do that from our school newspaper site. And so last year, I kind of let this fall a little bit. I started it, but it just takes a lot of time. And then I had a student who came up to me and said, what would you think about me running this? Yes, please, absolutely. And so it's been great. She gets the articles, and that's kind of her assignment for the week is to make sure it gets updated and they get they get um, they get the pictures on and they get under the right sections. But it's been an incredible learning experience for her too because she's learned learning how to work this system of 
blogs and WordPress or whatever it is that you choose to use for your site. Yeah. So what what are you using there? Is that we use we use WordPress. Yep. And then since we started having a little bit more content, we subscribed to Snow, SNO student newspaper it's online. And so there is a fee that comes with that. You don't have to do it that way. It's just that they offered us a little bit of tech support when we needed it last year. Um, but otherwise, WordPress is free. Um, and that worked great for us too. We just kind of wanted to challenge ourselves a little bit more this year with some video and just a few more fun things. There's a poll on there. Um, you know, how many days until homecoming and the Twitter feed links on there so students can look at that. The other thing that's pretty neat, besides just having students have their bylines, we've added every student's name in here. So if you clicked on staff and then you clicked on a student, you would be able to see all of the articles throughout the year that they wrote. And so they can send that out. Students have been able to use that when they go to a college interview or they're sending something out for um, kind of a, just a book of you know, professional writing they've done. And they can submit that. And so then they have their writing right there in front of them. So that's just an easy way to do that. Um, but again, just more motivating to have your, your byline somewhere online that you can tweet it out. Kids really like that. I'm just going to show it to you if I could here. I have to go out of time. I thought I missed it, sorry. So it has the cover of the paper in addition, so some of the PDFs can still be linked. One of the things that's kind of neat is it tells you, so opinions and pictures and the Twitter link, but again, this is just WordPress. But it does have the trending stories. So students kind of get a little bit competitive about how many views their story has had, maybe compared to somebody else. And so this article happened to have 115 views. That's kind of neat for a student to say 115 people. I mean, maybe they just opened it and looked at it for three seconds, but people are looking at their work. People other than their teacher are viewing that. And so you can kind of see then, you know, 97 views, like that's, that's pretty neat. We put that article up just less than two weeks ago. So to be able to have a lot of views on there is motivating for those students. Countdowns, and then of course, there's just been an opportunity to, if we can't fit something in the newspaper, if students want to create something, create it for the online content. And then, oh, okay, yeah, people are gonna see it still, sure. So I've had people do more work this year than ever because we have this online way to share it. So that's been motivating for design, for photos, for um, videos. A student made a video for our parish appeal, which was really, really neat. So they're using editing tools in addition to just writing. So combining a lot of things. There's our town two weeks ago when we didn't have school, so we had to update our, our the flood. And um, just having some things that are current, things that are really happening, makes it a little bit more hard news because if you're waiting to get the newspaper two weeks after the story ran, it's pretty soft news. So that's our school site. So this is just switching a little bit to reading. So New Zealand, is anybody familiar with New Zealand? Yeah, do you love it? Yeah. Um, what I have been using this for is for my freshmen. They do struggle with reading. That is why they're in the class. So we have a class that they've been recommended by an eighth grade teacher to take an additional reading class just because they, they're a little bit behind. So try to catch them up. So there is a free trial. You guys could chime into this, but have you had to pay to upgrade? No. I haven't either. I keep saying you ran out of your free trial, but I keep doing everything the same. So I guess my recommendation to you is keep going to the free trial because they don't take it away from you, apparently. So I used it last year, and I use it this year, and they're like, five more days. That hasn't, they haven't taken it away. So um, what's great about this, too, with just reading and writing standards is that it is nonfiction. So that's kind of nice, too. There's not a ton of um, resources out there that are always nonfiction. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. But it does allow you to change reading levels 
as well as have some quizzes for comprehension at the end. So I'll go into it for you first. So you can see the website has current news articles that are happening right now. So this particularly happens to be Hurricane Matthew. So if I wanted to take this story and assign this to my class, I could do that. So what I did is I had all of my students create a free account. All they had to do was put in their email and make a password, and then it gave them an access code. It was as simple as that, and then they were in my class on the computer. And so if I wanted to assign this particular story, I could just click on it. And what you can see over here, in addition to having a Spanish option, is that you can change the reading level. So right now, it's at an eighth grade reading level and it has 923 words. But if I was gonna change that, second grade reading level, 247 words. So you can see that the title even changed. We'll go back to it here. So it just gets a little bit easier to understand with the reading level increasing or decreasing. It's going to um, make it more or less challenging for your readers. And that also changes, of course, the word count. But if you're at a second grade reading level, still nonfiction, you're still reading about what's going on right now, but you don't have to read at a 10th grade level or read at the newspaper level. So it has a little bit more of bolded, kind of here's a subhead for you to try to understand what's going on. And then it allows you to take a quiz afterwards. And it's just four or five questions at the most. And you take your quiz and then it will tell me how you did on the quiz. So if I go into back here, but if I wanted to assign this story, I would just click on assign, select class, and I could pick to assign it to that reading class. You can add a little note to it, and then you can pick what reading level it is that you're associating it with. And I don't believe my students see the grade level. They would see that number, but what, you know, what does 99L mean to them or whatever. But second grade, they don't want to know they're reading at a third or fourth grade or fifth grade level, but that would disappear for them. So I kind of did for you just so you could see. You can see the example right there with three different reading levels that I changed, how just even the headline changes. So it makes it either more or less advanced based on the reading level that you choose. And again, I've gotten all of this for free. The student accounts have all been for free. Hasn't made me upgrade. Does anybody have the upgraded version? Just don't know what else it, I don't know what it does in addition to this. It's but. supposed to break your students down so you can look at them to see how they've improved throughout okay. it. It's supposed to track them individually, but okay. I think I that's can, the only difference really. Because right now it just kind of has a class like this, yeah. I guess. So I'm trying to blur this out, but um, so it has the student names and then it has what level it was that they read at that time. So that happened to be a third grade level text and then how they did and what date they took it at. And then I took two here for you that were very different. So this was kind of the first week that I got them and I was like, oh, let's read about Happy Meals and see how they do with this story. They didn't do very well. So they probably are not at that eighth grade reading level, at least with that article. And so it helped me say, okay, maybe we should start more at a third grade or a fifth grade level. Again, these are some struggling readers who need more assistance. And so when we went to the third grade level, they did a little bit better. So my goal would just be to help them continue to read, increase that, that difficulty level for them, and then hopefully see that comprehension score continue to increase as well. And did you say you put their accounts in? Or they... they just signed up their emails. They went to newzealand.com. They put an email address in, made a password for themselves, and I just had to give them the code to get into my classroom, which was right on the um, home page of create a new class and you know said to add this class at number 7812. And so they added 7812 and they were in my class ready to go. So it was really pretty easy. 
Again, these are freshmen, so if you have a little bit younger students, it might take a little bit more energy from you, but for me, it was just five minutes in class, and they were, they were in and ready to go. And so right now, maybe I was using the pro, but it did still break it down for me with each student, which was helpful. But they have so many different styles of articles, if it's sports, if it's health, um, if it's something as newsworthy as the hurricane. But I had them read about Pokemon Go the first week. You know, like, let's just read something fun. You don't know that you're reading and I'm assessing your comprehension. You're reading something that's nonfiction. It's all on your iPad and you are taking a couple of quiz questions after this. And so I don't take them for a grade, at least right away, until we get more into the year. And hey, you should probably figure out how this is working at least. But for the first few, just let me figure out where you're at, where your reading level is at, and what I need to do to help you. So that is an and blogs, I just wanted to tell you about student blogs. So I have a unit where my students make their own blogs. I have the requirements for them kind of as the assignment as well as the rubric so they can see right away up front what is it going to look like, what is she grading me on. But then I kind of try to be as hands off as possible. I want them to think of the idea. I want them I want them to struggle a little bit because I want them to get frustrated trying to make the blog because they learn and then they have ownership in it and then they love it. And so um, a part of me was a little worried my principal decided to come in and he's observing on the day that we do blog unit. And the students are frustrated and they're, they're getting mad. It's not doing what they thought it would do. A picture's not going where they wanted it to go. Creating these blogs. And it was, it was great, you know, he saw how positive that was too. They had to do a little bit of self-teaching and every single one is going to be different. And so just make, make your blog how you want it to look and help each other out, but there's not just this cookie cutter answer of how it's going to look. And so I had them, I just gave them suggestions mostly. You can write about books or movies, or I had a student take Pinterest ideas and then make them so it was recipes and she was sharing them and again by having your own student blogs they can share that with their friends they can tweet that link out and then more people are reading their writing than just the teacher so here's a couple of examples of how we do this so this is a picture of my classroom but this is the blog that we did just having a classroom site first and then what I did is I just kind of gave them a question like what is it that you're reading right now so I got them kind of comfortable with the blog format <coughs> Weebly is free if you're not familiar with that again you could do this with WordPress or another format so these students just had to write something about what it is that they're reading and why they might like it right now and then I commented back to them. So I did this for the last couple of years. And then I had them make their own blogs. So what I did is I took a page for each class period. Then they would go in, they find their name, and then they would build the blog however they wanted to. So again, that means pictures. Uh, one girl wants to be a photographer. She built a photography blog. So she had a lot more pictures on there than maybe somebody else does. Another student really is pressing herself to be a creative writer. And so she, I didn't even know this, she continued through the summer writing articles on that blog. And so she was challenging herself with various prompts and continuing to use that blog. Other students liked this idea and they felt so comfortable with it that they made their own blogs when this was all over. And so maybe it was more like makeup tutorials or something kind of fun like that. But they're still using what they learned in my class to be able to put this out there and write about it and then share it with other people. Here's a couple of examples of those blogs. So I learned a lot reading about these students. So this student is writing about the stages of grief and how she feels about death. 
These are pretty heavy topics. Some students are not going to be ready for that prompt. Some people don't want to write about that. But this gave her an outlet to be able to write about whatever it is that she wanted to. <laughs> um, and then one of the requirements on the rubric was that you had to comment on three other people's blog posts. And so you had to say something positive, but it taught them how to not only just comment on blogs, but it taught them to go in and actually read someone else's writing and have something to say about it. So they needed to be specific enough in their comments, which was on the rubric. You can't just go in the first persons and say, I love your blog, or great job. You need to comment specifically about something that that student wrote. And that way I know not only are you writing a blog, you're reading other people's too. And things that you just wouldn't know about a student, if any of you teach writing, you just learn a lot about students by teaching this, this topic because, or this, teaching writing in general, because what they write to you, you just learn a lot about them. I feel like sometimes parents come for conferences and we know more than they do sometimes because writing is just a way to be able to share that. And this student just really loves books and she wanted to write about books. And I love to read, so it's something that we have in common when I see her and passing in the hall now to be able to say, what are you reading right now? And you can see other, other students too commented back on it. And the last example here just... Just different albums. You can see people liked it, people, your blog looks so cool. <laughs> but just more topics that you can write about. <coughs> and then the last thing here is Canva. How many of you use Canva? Canva is a free app, or you can just use the website, but it is something that makes writing just look really pretty. So if you have a project in mind, but you don't know how to make it look like a graphic that would run as an advertisement, this will do that for you. So you can pull in different backgrounds, you can pull in different graphics, you can make posters, book fair, blood drive, all of this stuff for free. Some of them are going to be for you, for sale, um, there's just tons of different pre-made canvas, and then you can also make your own. And so this was one project I did with my students who read the Westing game last year in that reading class. And so students had a requirement, they had a little rubric for this project. But again, it was one of those things where they had to go and find Canva, download it, and they had to kind of figure it out a little bit. Like I, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it has to look like, I think one of the things that I run into with my own students, they want, what is it supposed to look like when it's done exactly? Well, that takes all the creativity out of it. And so sometimes I want it done a specific way, but other times you show me what you think it should look like, or you tell, I mean, their idea might be a whole lot better than what I even imagined. And so let them be a little bit more creative and play around with it. And so for the Westing Game Project, I simply said you have to have you know, five descriptive words about the book, mystery, wealth, not um, murder, if you've read the Westing game. And you have to have three quotes that a, the same character said. So they pick a character, they wrote what does that character, maybe some characteristics about that character, and then they found three quotes that character said. And so not only are they flipping that through the book, but they're trying to put together oh, well, this is how this particular character interacts with people, or who was it that said that again? Because the Westing game, if you've read it, has a lot of characters. So it was just a lot of characters to keep track of for them. But then we had these posters that we could say, well, let's go back to Kyle's. He's the one who um, covered Mr. Westing or something like that, and we can look at the characteristics that that person has. So that was just kind of a fun way for them to get quotes and pictures and bring their writing to life in a really pretty way. But you could really use it for um, 
really anything with graphics. So Canva is, again, free, but I would definitely recommend checking that out if you haven't used it. That's really kind of the things I wanted to go through, but I'd be happy to answer any questions on any of those that I walked you through. Um, if you have any questions or you want to try Erasmus or you want to try the augmented reality, I'd be happy to answer questions. I'm just curious, how, how large is your newspaper staff that you have writing? It's really big. I have 55 students. I don't know why it's cool. I, I mean, I came to the school from um, another school where they had like sticks or something, and then I get to stay here, and the newspaper is really cool. So um, the staff is really big. We have two class periods worth of students. And so how do you have the two class periods work together then? It's a challenge. Um, in order to make the newspaper, we have, I try my best to make one editor and an assistant editor in separate classes, but schedules don't always work that way. So we use InDesign to make our paper. So a lot of times they're writing notes back to each other on the page. So when they come in, they know, open up my InDesign page on the computer. My person who's before me should have written me a note how far they got, where, what I need to do today. Someone has to take leave what interviews I need, what pictures I might need to get. Yeah. Do run your school's paper? We just started yeah. it this year, okay. so we're kind of getting it off the ground. How many people do you have, students? Uh, 15 total split okay. between two classes. Okay, 15 is a pretty good number, though, for first. If you want help with the online or anything like that. And the school, um, we run a school newspaper Twitter account, too, which is a good way for me to brag about their writing. Like, oh, the Caitlin's article was in the Gazette today, or whatever. So. Um, just kind of a good way to get their their name out there too. It has been helpful. I went out and visited some students out at Notre Dame. Actually, I was just at a game, and I ran into a student there, and he said, "Oh, I used my article that I had online, and I applied to um, write for the Notre Dame baseball team. And so he's going to cover the baseball season as a media reporter. But he was one of the people I showed you. He." Um, he had all of those online because you just search his name and all of his work comes up. And so it's just a really good way. He didn't have to email me and say, oh, Mrs. Wagner, can you send me all my articles, thankfully. Um, he just puts his name in the paper site and they all show up. Or on the Gazette since he wrote for sports. So just a good way for them to build a professional portfolio of writing. It's really easy. Any other questions? Questions on any of those apps? Yeah. Um, your newspaper people that come mm -hmm. in. So you're not only teaching how to write a paper, but you're on the article of the day as well. Like, you can help them do especially with the Yeah. Yeah, the um, Cedar Rapids, they, they've just been incredible. They come in. So I actually have a prerequisite class for a newspaper called Beginning Journalism. So he comes into that class too and kind of just gives some basics and then <coughs> I'm working with those students to make it better and then they can submit the next year. Um, or by the end of the year, he will take one submission from each of them. He will email them back and me back and say, you buried your lead, you should bring it to the front. I mean, that's so much time for him and I'm giving him like a Starbucks gift card. And I, I mean, I don't know, it's just nothing compared to what he's giving us, it's just incredible. So we're very thankful for that relationship, but he, um, I think he started this program because it, he needed more content and he didn't have that many writers and not that we're super great, but it's generating content for him that he doesn't have to pay for either. So uh, having a tab that has student writers has helped his numbers continue to go up and he gives us a couple t-shirts or something for writing for him. So, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, he's really great. So definitely reach out, reach out to any media people in your community. They they were great. Yeah, and just having somebody hear how writing. I teach high school, but just how writing can be a major, or what can you do with that degree right now, and how that again, not dying, just changing. So yeah. Any other questions? If you want to try Erasmo, please come up and see it, or you're welcome to use my phone to give it a shot if it didn't download for you, or you couldn't find our account or any of those things. But it's really cool, really, really cool app. So definitely encourage you to use it. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it.